Hi everyone, it's Sloan Rhodes. Hi subscribers. As I mentioned in December, I am starting a new Q&A series, question and answer series, where I take questions from all of you and you're welcome to continue to send me questions that you might want answered or are looking for clarity on around spirituality, spiritual awakening, the egoic energies, the heart-centered energies. I'm going to be continuing this series um, for as long as I can. And um, so today I am going to be answering a question from Ashley who emailed me and I'm going to read the question to you and then I'm going to um, talk about it a little bit. It's a great question and I'm really glad that she asked it. So it has to do with letting go. I think we can all relate to that. Uh, and I'm going to read her question so we're all on the same page. So Ashley asks, um, sometimes I feel confused about letting something go. I can't tell if it's a lesson I needed to learn and move forward from or if the confusion I feel about letting go means I haven't fully understood the lesson yet. So that is the question from Ashley. So I, th I think it's a great question because there's not one of us who hasn't experienced some level of holding on to something or not willing or wanting or feeling ready to let something go. And in terms of your own spiritual awakening, in terms of the egoic energies and the heart-centered energies, the reason this comes up for many of us, especially when it's something that we hold onto for a very long time, it's something we keep going back to, the mind keeps continually uh, going back to, is we manufacture, from the egoic perspective, situations so that we can't ignore them. You know, they become so painful or they become so distracting that we have to address them. We create situations that are so big for us uh, in terms of our focus, the ego's focus, that it pushes us deeper into the heart space so that we can have these awakenings. You know, they, they occur whatever they may be, it could be a relationship that you can't let go, it could be the fact that you don't get something that your ego seemingly thinks it wants or needs in order to feel peaceful or happy. For some people it's wanting a baby or a boat, <laughs> a certain job, or you get fired and you feel that it has been unjust. These types of situations, they become such a focus and so big to us that we don't give ourselves a break. We don't give ourselves a free pass on them. We keep going back to them so that we can do the deeper work. And that's very frustrating, <laughs> of course, to the ego because the ego says, I just want to be done with it, right? Why can't I move on from this? And the reason that we don't usually move on as quickly as we would like or let go, as Ashley describes it, um, is because uh, it's not about the thing itself. It's about understanding the deeper meaning behind why we keep looking towards this thing to finally provide us a sense of peace. So if it's letting go of a relationship or letting go of the way that you perceived yourself as having been treated in a relationship or anything else, you keep going back to it, keep going back to it because it's a familiar patterning to the mind, a familiar patterning to the ego, um, to the inner child. And usually we keep going back to it because it has triggered our ego so deeply into feelings of um, not feeling safe or feeling unloved that we feel that we have to figure it out so that we can feel safe or feel loved in order to move on. And it's a huge distraction. So no matter what it is that we are seemingly unable to let go of, it's not about that thing at all. It's about the deeper lessons of understanding that it is a distraction from the present moment, from the peace that is available in the present moment. And it doesn't feel like we could ever find peace until we figure out how to let this thing go. That we have to let this thing go in order to finally feel a sense of peace. But in truth, you're not letting, thing go, letting anything go at all. You don't where does it go? You don't let it go. You uh, transmute the energy. Just as a farmer tills the soil, and as the farmer is tilling the soil and rocks come up, the farmer sets them aside, not to ignore, not to forget about, 
but to be utilized in some other way, possibly to build a border around something or a wall or to grind up um, for some purpose, such as making cement, this kind of thing. You don't let anything go. Where does it go? It doesn't go anywhere. You transmute that energy into another form of energy. So everything is utilized. So don't ever worry that you, you're not going to let anything go or if that you don't let something go. You can't have more of your preferences. You can. It's just a matter of recognizing the distractive nature of it, the distracting nature of it. It becomes an obsession of the mind and is a trick, it's the trickery of the ego that keeps you there, keeps you focused on that. As I've mentioned before, the ego is like a bright spotlight. When it flips on that bright light, it obscures everything else and all you can think about is that one thing and you find you keep going back to it, you keep going back to it. And the reason you keep going back to it um, is because you, you've created this situation, this opportunity to push yourself deeper into the heart space, to surrender more. There's nothing you can do about it, right? Usually, when we can't let something go, um, as we describe it here, uh, it's something that we don't have any control over. <laughs> you know, that's one of the favorite little tricks of the ego, is that there's nothing actually that you can do about it, but you find you keep going back to it. It's like the carrot at the end of the stick. If I can just get that thing figured out, if I can figure out why that person left me, or why I can't get pregnant, or why, um, I got fired from that job or you know whatever it may be if I can figure it out then I can prevent it from happening again or then I can finally have closure <laughs> and then I can have the experiences that I want more of my preferences so in terms of letting go recognize what it is you're really wanting Recognize what the experience of holding on, seemingly holding on, is providing for you. Well, as I mentioned, you're not giving yourself a free ride on this. You are forcing yourself in this incarnation to continually go back to this wounding, let's say it's often uh, feels like a wound and you, like you keep picking at it, you know, you want to make sense of it and it feels familiar to the ego, familiar to the inner child because it's a familiar pattern that you've brought into this lifetime and has played out many, many times. And uh, so you keep going back to it. And you're going back to it so that you can transcend the egoic's um, focus upon it. So it's frustrating, of course, and it takes consciousness around it and gentleness, you know, rather than beating yourself up oh, why can't I let this go? If I only let this go, then I can finally feel the peace and then I can finally have the relationship that I want. That's an illusion. That's, that's a trickery of the mind because we've all experienced these moments where we get into these, these eddies, right? Where we can't seem to get out. Or finally we're able to get out either through our surrender to the situation, our acceptance of it, or our transcendence of it, or even with a new distraction, say you're trying to get over an individual, you're trying to let someone go or a relationship go, or the way that you perceive yourself as having been treated go, and then you draw in someone else, a new experience, it's a distraction, but then surely it doesn't take much time. You find yourself in a familiar patterning, once again, of trying to let that thing go. You know, it's, it repeats itself. Um, so you may actually let go, so to speak, of a situation or a person, but until you understand the deeper lessons of it, which as I feel it and see it and experience it, it's about transcending that egoic desire to fix it, to, to fix this one problem in your life as your ego perceives it, that will finally make you whole or worthy of love or safe. And the more that you recognize it in this moment, that is an illusion that you are somehow unsafe or unloved, that you are whole and complete just as you are and that no matter what someone seemingly did to you or didn't do or what you didn't get or, sh or, or seemingly didn't get or, or should have gotten, <laughs> should have are always very uh, important to the egoic thought structure, uh, that you're safe, you're okay and that in this moment all is well. It's not always easy to get there but 
this is why we, we tend to um, have difficulty letting go of things. Because even though uh, it's not comfortable to hold on to something that feels uh, painful, it's a familiar patterning to the ego, to the inner child. Because if you were to seemingly let that thing go, would you be safe? You know, the ego thrives in the energy of being on guard, protecting yourself. You know, you were hurt before, you didn't get what you wanted, the ego felt a, a threat. And so it holds on to that so that it can remember the threat so that it feels safe. It can guard against future threats. And if it let go of the threat, if it let go of the energy of that seeming threat, the, to the ego's perspective, it's vulnerable. So you, you know, the, you transcend this in this lifetime, this is in any lifetime. This is why we tend to have trouble letting go in terms of, you know, this, uh, this idea of letting go. If we let go of it, what would I be? How would I be? I'd be vulnerable, I'd be open again. And so this is why we tend to hold on. But as I mentioned, it's an illusion. It's, it's, uh, it's a distraction from the present moment. You know, as an example, uh, so you wake up in the morning, right? You wake up in the morning, you feel good, and you're still waking up, and you're like, yes, I had a great night's sleep, or whatever, and then suddenly, the seeming reality of your situation flashes in. This thing happened to me. I can't believe it happened. I can't believe they did that to me. Right? <laughs> right away, you're back in the older patterning and your feet haven't even hit the floor yet. <laughs> you haven't even got out of bed yet and already you're feeling angry, you're feeling victimized, you're feeling sad, you're feeling behind the eight ball. Um, and so your, the patterning begins, the adrenaline rises and, and the ego has top billing, the ego has control, that you have completely um, lost the present moment because you're living in a state of what seemingly happened in the past to you based on your consciousness at the time and you are also somehow projecting it into the imagined future that you have to be on guard against <laughs> it doesn't feel pleasant and so you've completely lost the present moment where everything is fine everything is good you're just a person <laughs> waking up you know into conscious awareness and so letting go in terms of Ashley's question is can be confusing because we feel as though we have to let go in order to to have something to be whole to fix something that is seemingly missing and this is where the confusion comes in because you're not actually letting anything go at all there's nowhere for it to go and you're already whole and complete you're trying to get somewhere that you already are you're already perfection just as you are you know as, as you understand um, on a spiritual level as a um, as a spiritual being having this, this human experience. I think if I want to say anything else about that. And it can be confusing. It can be confusing to the mind because the mind wants to work it, figure it out. If I can just figure this out, then I will know why, why um, they did this to me. Right? So you're, you're in a state of victimhood. They did this to me. I do not have that. I lack something. So you hold on to it. You continue to go to it. But again, the reason you're continuing to go to it, to pick at the wound, is to transcend it. It doesn't matter what it is, because it is a distraction from the present moment. You are transcending the ego in the moment that you can. And within that moment, you are settling in to presence. Settling into the present moment. Allowing the present moment to be the fullness that it is, without the distraction of the ego. You may find yourself going into a peaceful place and then suddenly, whatever it is that you're, you're wanting to let go of, flashes back in, oh, but they did that to me. And you come back to peace. Oh, but yeah, wait, you know, and then you go back in there again. And so this is, tends to be why we, we hold on to things or we have trouble um, seemingly letting go of things. So I hope that that answers some of the questions for you uh, and provides a little bit of clarity. I, I may readdress this. It's a fascinating topic. Um, 
And uh, if you have any other questions about it, of course, you're welcome to leave them here on the YouTube channel or email me or any questions around spirituality, ego and heart awakening that um, you'd like some clarity on, uh, you can email me or leave a message here. And I'll also be posting on this video in audio form on the podcast so that you can listen to it as well as watch it here on the YouTube channel and there'll be links below. And in the meantime, I wish you much love as always. Till next time.